engage the parking brake by stepping on the pedal and pulling up and verifying that the parking brake is on. All right, guys, so before we actually work on our rear TLX brakes or any rear Honda brakes for that matter, equipped an electronic parking brake, that we actually want to raise up the vehicle with the rear electronic parking brake engaged. And the reason why is that we don't want this rear hub to be rotating while we try to get this Phillips head looking screw from the rotors. Now this screw here is actually installed from the factory to help facilitate the assembly process to keep these on the rear hub. You remove it and you don't actually have to replace them if you don't want to or don't have a replacement. Um, but more often than not, these things are rusted in pretty badly. But the easiest way to remove it is to use a drive punch with a pointed tip and then basically just kind of take your hammer here. You wanna pound that in until you dimple it to get a little groove on the head of the screw. If you guys can see that right here. And then the reason why the parking brake is engaged is so that when we whack the screw to try to unscrew it, that this hub doesn't rotate. So let's go and hit it at a 45 degree angle to break the screw loose. And you see it just rotated. And now I can take my screwdriver here and undo this. And you can either save the screw for reuse or just chuck it. It doesn't really matter. Now the next step is to now start the vehicle and disengage the parking brake. With the engine running, apply the brakes, take the parking brake off such that the light on the dash is out. With the parking brake now disengaged, the next step is to undo this little connector here on our electronic parking brake actuator. And that can be accomplished by taking a small flat bladed screwdriver and then inserting it to lift the tab up and then lifting up on the connector here. So just like that to free it so that this is disconnected. And then we're going to then take our T30 Torx bit and we're going to undo this screw right here. And then another one, just uh, you guys can see that. Uh, back here so there's two t30 torque screws holding on this actuator motor okay so here's my t30 make sure that that tip of this bit is screwed securely into or pressed firmly into the head because you don't want to strip this and then we want to break that loose that's what it looks like it's your t30 head and then do the same for the back side. We can then just give the actuator a twisting motion back and forth. And then just pulling away from the back side of our caliper. Take a T45 bit and then insert it into the back hole of your caliper and then turn it clockwise. What this is doing is that it's retracting the parking brake piston in the back side of the caliper so that you can actually retract it to install your new brake pads. Turn the spindle clockwise until it stops. It should require very little effort and once it stops don't continue trying to force it to turn. Using a 14 millimeter socket remove the two bolts from the caliper um, body from its bracket. Don't completely remove the bolts just yet until you've loosened both top and bottom bolts. Pull the caliper body away from the pads and then just carefully tuck it into, sit it on top of the rear sway bar. Using a screwdriver, just carefully pry the brake pad out of the retaining clips on the caliper bracket. The outboard pad has no squeal tab on it. And then do the same for the back inboard pad, which does have the squeal tab on it. Now, if you're replacing the rotors, what we need to do is we have to remove the caliper bracket from the rear axle knuckle. And that can be accomplished by removing these two 17 millimeter bolts. The top one will need to be removed with a wrench while the bottom one can be removed with a socket and ratchet. 
So we're gonna break that loose with our ratchet. And the top one, being in the awkward position that it's in, use an offset wrench, right? And we're gonna put it onto our bolt. Whatever works, just don't damage the head of the screw <clears throat> to break that loose. One bolt, two bolts, and then just pull away from the rear axle knuckle assembly. We're going to take our mallet. Like so. Now, this center hub here has a bit of corrosion, so I'm going to use a wire wheel brush on a drill and just run it over the center hub to clean the corrosion off. Just be mindful that you don't nick the threads where the lug nuts go. Taking some brake cleaner, spray down, remove all the crap off of the hub. So brand new rotors come shipped with a very light spray coating of oil and that's to protect it from corrosion during transit. So to get that off, we just take a little bit of our brake cleaner, spritz it on that surface, and then using a clean towel, wipe that clean. We're gonna flip it around and repeat the same for the face. Here's our replacement rotor. I said that you didn't have to reinstall that securing screw to hold the rotor onto the hub, but since our screw was not damaged, we can reinstall. So this tapered hole here beside the lug nut hole lines up with the threaded hole where that screw belongs. So we just simply line it up like that. Screw that back in to hold the rotor in place. Our brake pad kit comes with some replacement brake pad shims. So these ones here are quite dirty. So rather than trying to clean them, which is fine if you want to reuse them, um, we're just going to put new ones in that came with our kit. So we'll just take our screwdriver, pop these out, do the same for the other side. Bring our wire wheel. And just run it through the grooves and the surface where the new shim will go. And then rinse down some brake cleaner. Inspect the back side of our caliper bracket. Make sure that there's no excess corrosion building up here. If there is, just hit it with the wire wheel. You want this to mate squarely back onto that rear uh, knuckle bracket. So here is the new shims that came in our kit. They just simply pop on. They should sit nice and flush within the cutouts of the shim. Repeat the same for the other side. And I always check the center alignment to make sure that it's not shifted over too far to the left or to the right. It should be perfectly flat with the inside gap where the rotor passes through our caliper. Next, going to hold the little rubber boot here and pull out the slide pins. I'm going to wipe off this excess grease and reapply some Sil Glide caliper pin lube. So just wipe this old grease off. Making sure that you pay attention to the little groove here that the boot goes over. I'm going to clean that up too. And then taking some Sil Glide, lubricate your pins. So with it lubed up like this, not too much, we're going to insert it back while twisting it back and forth to spread the lubricant and then pushing firmly back into the caliper bracket. Repeat the same for the other pin. 
Now it should be noted that one of the pins actually does have a rubber bushing on the end of it, right? So make sure that you work on one pin at a time. And if you're having issues with this bushing swelling, then it's time to order replacement pins from your um, local automotive parts store or Honda Acura dealership. So just like before, apply a thin coat of Silglide. And then twisting it back and forth while reinserting it into the caliper bracket, like so. Okay, so make sure that these pins move back and forth freely. Make sure that your shims are pressed up nice and firmly inside the bracket. And then we can reinstall this back onto the rear wheel hub knuckle. And hand thread these in first. We're gonna torque the rear bracket back to the rear knuckle, 80 foot pounds. Now, because the top bolt can't be accessed because of the lack of clearance, unfortunately, we're going to have to use the good old manual human torque wrench. I'm gonna make sure I'm squared up against that bolt and then like that. So we're gonna take the little grease pack that came with our kit and just a apply a tiny, tiny, tiny amount just to the sliding surfaces of our brake pad that's gonna go into the shim just to help it slide a little bit easier. It's like that, so barely anything. Now, no squeal tab goes on the outside. So put it in at a 45 degree angle like this and then give it a push and a twist and it should just go right in to the shims and then repeat the same procedure for the other side. And again, the wear tab is gonna be on the inboard pad. Now, in your brake pad kit, it is actually kind of important to know which side is which with the wear tab. Now, normally what happens is that as the wheel rotates forward, as the car is driving forward, you want to install the wear tab at the entrance of the caliper. So in this case, the wheel is rotating this way, and so therefore, as the rotor sweeps through the bracket, it's gonna come through. So that's why this wear tab has to be pointing down on the passenger side. Um, so make sure that you pay attention to the orientation of this, always at the entrance of the caliper body. So just like what we did earlier, we do a 45 degree and just a gentle push. And that pad should just slide right in. Taking an old toothbrush, Scrub all the junk and dirt and crap off of the caliper boot just to clean this all up before we retract it in so we're not trapping dirt in the folds of the boot. I like using an old toothbrush because the bristles are soft so it won't damage the boot. And then same thing, you're gonna brush the backside here just to clean up any junk that might be built up on it. Okay, so once that's done, Give it a spray with brake cleaner. Now the retractor piston, unlike what other people have said, that it's got these three prongs here that you know, you'd use a tool to screw this piston in. On the TLX, you don't actually have to do that at all. It's just a traditional compression piston. So I've actually got a huge pair of pump pliers and I'm just going to Grab the rear wing, okay? So if you look at the back side of our caliper here, there's a rear wing right here that the actuator screws onto. I'm gonna very carefully just sort of grip it on that wing like that. Just barely making any contact and just consistently apply some pressure to the piston and just give it a squeeze. And then you'll notice that the piston is retracting back into the caliper body. Squeeze all the way until it bottoms out. And that's what it looks like. Now you'll notice there's a bit of bulging on that boot. And it's because air is built up behind this boot. So to flatten that out, to get the folds nice and even, you're gonna take a small flat bladed screwdriver, very carefully insert it into the boot, just to lift it up to let it fart, so to speak. And see when you fart, the air out of the boot 
it goes nice and folded in the way it's supposed to. Then reinstall a caliper body over the brake pads and it should go on with very little effort. You might have to compress the pins as needed on the bracket here just to get the clearance in to get it on. Reinstall our 14 millimeter bolt to reattach the caliper body onto the caliper bracket. And tighten them down to hand tight or just 17 foot pounds. So before we reinstall our actuator, take a clean rag and just wipe off any excess dust and crap that's on the backside of our caliper here making sure that this o-ring is nice and clean and free of any debris because that's what's going to seal out any water and dirt from entering prior to reinstallation we're going to also coat this o-ring with a really tiny amount of sil glide like barely anything just rub it on your finger and just kind of spread it thinly and that'll help the actuator slide back on a little easier so i just coated that with sil glide there's barely anything, you can, can't even see it, honestly. It's just got a slight sheen to the O-ring. This is our actuator. So using a clean paper towel, clean out the dirt. You wanna make sure that that's as clean as possible because these actuators are very expensive to replace. Make sure that the connector is clean of any dirt. Just like what we did with that o-ring we're just going to take a ultra ultra tiny minuscule amount of sil glide and we're just going to rub the inside of it with this lubricant and that's just to help that seal slide on properly and to also keep it water tight okay so again you can barely see it. it's just got a slight shine to it and that's about it no excess residue anywhere we're going to reinstall our actuator to the back side of our caliper and it just kind of, it should just pop right back on if it doesn't you want to just rotate it back and forth to get the splines to line up on the back of that caliper uh, Torx drive, but it usually just pops right on without any issue. We're going to take our T30 screws that you can see has got a bit of corrosion built up on it. We're going to prevent future corrosion by applying some nickel anti-seize. Just coat that on there. That anti-seize there is just to help allow it to be lubricated and to prevent it from rusting any further. So we just hand thread those in. Repeat the same for the second screw. Once we've hand threaded these in, using our T30 Torx, just hand tighten these until just snug. Tiny screws, so don't use a lot of force, otherwise they'll break. So the e-brake actuator is properly installed when it sits perfectly flush with the backside of our caliper. There's no gaps whatsoever. They reconnect the electrical pigtail connector until you hear it click, like so. Now the last and final step in our brake and rotor replacement procedure is to bleed the braking system. But before doing so, we need to make sure that the master cylinder fluid reservoir is filled to the top. Now this fluid reservoir is directly in front of the driver's side firewall and the type of fluid that the braking system needs is indicated on the brake fluid cap. So in this case it says dot three or a dot four equivalent fluid. So I've got a new bottle of dot three fluid here and we're just going to top off the fluid reservoir until it is full so that we don't run into a low fluid condition during the bleeding procedure. So then when it's full, put your cap back on and let's go to the back and begin bleeding the system. So it doesn't technically matter which side, driver or passenger, that you bleed first because we haven't actually opened up the braking system and the purpose of bleeding is just to make sure that we pull any old fluid and potential air bubbles that we may have introduced by pushing the piston back into our caliper out of the brake lines to give you the best braking performance. That's also a safety thing, so air in brake lines is really bad. Now, you can go and look at other bleeding videos on YouTube that explain how to do a manual bleed. Basically, you take a tube, right, hook it up, submerge into the brake fluid, open up the bleeder valve, and then basically pump the fluid uh, with that tube submerged in brake fluid about 10 times on each side and then you close the brake bleeder valve and then you're usually done. In this case, I'm gonna use a negative pressure or a vacuum bleeder just to make things a little bit easier because I'm a one-man show. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take my wrench and crack open our bleeder, hook up my vacuum bleeder, turn on the vacuum and open up the vacuum. 
now. You can actually see brake fluid starting to get sucked out. So I'm going to let that draw for about 30 seconds because you can see it's not a continuous stream. Just the way vacuum bleeders work. But 30 seconds should be enough time to pull the brake fluid from the master cylinder through the lines and through the caliper and any air bubbles along with it. So 30 seconds. We can then close our bleeder firmly. Wipe our little nipple. And reinstall our bleeder cap. Start the car, pump the brake at least 10 times to make sure that it's nice and firmed up. And then engage your parking brake. And then while holding the brake pedal, disengage parking brake. And Repeat that several times just to make sure that the actuators are working properly and no error messages come up. With the parking brake activated, put the vehicle in neutral. All right, so currently in neutral, that's just the object warning because there's garbage bins in front of the car. But I'm gonna slope driveway and it's not rolling back and it's even telling me to shift to park. So holding the brake pedal, I'm gonna release the parking brake. Now the car should roll back, and it does. So we're good. Put it back in park, and that is all there is to it. If you guys like this video, give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel, and thanks for watching.